What is going on everybody? Today we're at 1492 Coach Works in Oklahoma City where some of the coolest toys in the world are made. This is where Outback Customs, the horse trailer company, fabricates some of the most custom horse trailers. And today we're hanging out with Aaron Weimer, the owner of 1492. Hey Andrew. How you doing today, sir? Good, you? Excellent, thank you. And there's a lot of cool stuff going on in this building behind us. What do you guys do here at 1492 and Outback? Outback Customs and is the horse trailer side and kind of the specialty side so we make do a ton of horse trailer interiors you can see around here and we'll see when we go inside you know that's a pretty well pro we've been doing that over 11 years that's a pretty well developed product line for us I think we do some of the best work in the business we've got a great team doing that then we also do specialty stuff uh, command centers fracking trailers a lot of stuff like that uh, pretty cool Pete you'll get to see in a second the coach side is the relatively new that we started developing that in 20 2020, which just in case anybody thinks I'm really smart and thought like 2020, I timed it because of COVID. No, it was a couple years prior to that. It was my stupidity that I started in 2020 when you couldn't find anything, but what? we're doing good. We're getting there. It's definitely worked out because you and your team have been pushing the Super C industry. Yeah. The most custom, the most expensive Super C on the roads are built in this building behind us. Do you think you could show the folks on YouTube the build process and how you come up with them? Yeah, you bet. Let's yep. take a look inside. All right. So right now, this is the front office or where are we yeah, at? Yeah, just here? the main entrance. Yep. Like everything in our life, it's all a work in progress. So the office is under a little bit of construction, but the main entryway, this was part of our manufacturing even two years ago we were building in here we needed more office space so we just kind of rocked this out in a couple tied in i like the industrial you know kind of theme and all that still need to finish the stairs and a few other things but if you ever it's too bad debbie's not here because everybody gets to meet debbie on the first phone call and she's really sweet she's on vacation this week but mostly production offices and purchasing offices down here the engineering is upstairs my office accounting and sales our design center and all that's upstairs the main factory is out this way so what we refer to as our main line because it's kind of who we've been and who we are the horse trailer stuff kind of runs out here our upholstery shop is right here because you know with all the machines and all the equipment dust and dirt is bad for sewing equipment so we bring it in here chance here runs our upholstery shop we do a lot of cool stuff our embroidery machine is under that cover and then all our different sewing machines i'll show you this it's a door panel for that peterbilt that i was showing you but you know we kind of just custom design stitch that up do a bunch of cool stuff like that yeah in a second you mentioned the peterbilt and we just got a sneak preview of that i think we're going to show that to the folks on youtube you're doing a full refurbish on a 1969, 1969 peterbilt yep yep it's pretty cool it's pretty cool I, we like doing stuff like that around here because it just kind of shakes it up but this is a recliner mechanism like we're building all of that and like on the coach side of life we do have the option to buy villa seating if somebody would prefer villa seating but we have some unique things that you know we see on the on the interior of that coach we're going to do the walkthrough on that are unique to us on our seating so like this is a convertible sofa we'll talk about that but it's upside down it's actually backside down right now but it's real wood you know solid hardwood frame that we cover and wrap so kind of build our own furniture notched you know all that stuff like we need it jackknife sofa frames are there like all with all that we fab the horse trailer side starts here in this bay where they frame it up outback customs has been in business for 11 years and uh, about how many horse trailers a year do you build about 250 so we do ride at one a day out of here for the most part everybody's gone and they've cleaned up and all that stuff towards the end of the day but it's hopping in here you know when when we're going and it's a really like every single you know department as we go through this is kind of a production line so it gets further you know more and more complete but every single station it's QC we've developed a really extensive QC program for that stuff and of course all that trickles over to the coach side and you know even a larger scale you know because there's a lot more going on four slides all that stuff well but you've um, probably learned a lot in the last decade building these horse well for sure you know what really sent us down like if anybody knows anything about the horse trailer industry it's really high quality and it's really custom like the Oklahoma built trailers like the stuff that we're looking at here the stuff that I'm really proud to have in my building and work in partnership with these brands like that's the best aluminum fabrication in my mind in the world like they do it right and so 
so much of what we've been able to pick up and learn and the contacts and just talking of course we're we all do business together and they're great you know great people and they want to help out and they've been kind of instrumental in us building the aluminum shell of our coaches like we're doing we've learned a lot from those guys so that's been kind of cool for me and to see you know a little bit like when they come in here and like dang you know you're not just an interior guy you know yeah. it's kind of fun well, but that aluminum shell I think you got a shell down here yeah that we could see yeah we do over here is our CNC router operates pretty much all day every day cutting the all this stuff that you see here it's all generated by engineering it comes down to the machine there's a bunch of different parts cut at one time it minimizes yield these are our cabinet bodies it's a special lightweight plywood that we bring in so it's you know hell for stout and it's a lightweight all at the same time so all that stuff gets kind of kitted up I don't like to say you know I don't mean to be a negative connotation like but we kind of Ikea cabinet our you know our build on that so all that stuff comes in this is the door shop we build over 300 cabinet doors a week we yeah. build all our own pocket doors like bathroom doors or swing doors we mirror them and that gives us a lot of flexibility in design in quality we do some things on you can't hardly see it on this but on we laminate a beam here we take two pieces of wood on our pocket doors because they're long and they're big and we laminate them together so they're always pushing and pulling on each other and that keeps it straight going down the road when we go from these big temperature fluctuations that RVs or horse trailers go from there's a lot of stuff trickling over which is exciting for me too from our coach side that we've developed there that we're bringing into the horse trailer side the cabinets all the bodies come in here and we'll build face frames and things of that nature custom pieces over there and then it goes to again everybody's kind of gone home but the body builders in here this is quarter sawn wood quarter sawn oak which this is pretty slick because not a lot of people can kind of do this and that's that quarter sawn is like the old world like if you looked at an old piece of antique furniture or whatever it's going to have this and it kind of has a cool look and when we're building cabinets and a whole trailer out of that like it's just kind of got it it's got a real like classic vibe we've done it i did it for a show unit a few years ago and we've done it quite a bit since then and it just it was stepping out a little bit but it worked is it a very robust wood oh or? for sure i mean this is oak so this is red oak it's just how they saw it so we'll do all kinds of species we can do laminate stuff we kind of bypass the countertop area but we build all our own solid surface countertops granite quartz all that stuff we build we fab it here and it's time frame it's quality control it's all that stuff why we like to bring everything and we just keep adding to it and there's a whole lot coming you know that we're planning on adding we get this new addition done that will allow us some room to grow again all this you can't tell we might be able to find a better one in there but it's all the whole face frames all glued and screwed together it's going to last the clear maple on the inside of the cabinet turns out you know we can see that in the coach here in a little bit like the the clear maple is a nice bright cabinet on the inside so I like that um, we only switched to that across the board a, a year or two ago so all the wood stuff feeds basically into here into the finish shop where this is a big deal and this is the most like we're we're spraying conversion varnish in here so it's really close to like an automotive paint you got to catalyze it you got to reduce it right you got to do all this stuff and it takes a lot to be able to spray that but it's a highly durable highly uv resistant scratch resistant coating i mean it's basically the best coatings that you can do and all that and when it's running i mean it's like there's a lot going on in here and it's bright but i say all the time like we always are struggling because we build such a broad range we are always battling to stay on target and on schedule and that's kind of the hard part about what we do is the mix is so different and the cabinet build is basically the same no matter what the species is when we bring it in here that's we are always fighting because it can be an antique glaze finish that goes from you know three-step process to like a nine-step process and all that stuff but it's what we do and it's cool and, it, and is there anything that you won't do any type of custom woodwork no not really i mean we do all the paint stuff i mean if it's woodwork it's in our wheelhouse really you know that's that's who we are we're a glorified cabinet shop you know basically <laughs> so um, but you can see that's a really good example here of it's all screwed together it's screwed together here you know all that i mean that is a really well-built cabinet and that's the same in the horse trailer stuff or the coach stuff like it's just a glued and screwed together cabinet that's going to hold up for a long long time and this is alder wood this is just stained and got the 
satin finish on it, but we use it a lot in the horse trailer stuff. It's pretty lightweight wood, but it's got a good look and like a rustic kind of deal to it. But what's this? I just that's the quarter sawn. That was that cabinet. That's quarter sawn that's stained out. Yeah. Yeah, it looks um, really good. And when the doors get on there and all that, like it looks, yeah. I like the vintage kind of look. Finish shop is, I mean, these those guys, I mean, it's a dang sure world class wood finish coming out. Oh, there's that Peterbilt. This is something Jeez. I'm excited about. <laughs> so cool. 1969. Oh man, and Brian's coming out of it right now. That was perfect time, Brian. So Brian is our lead fab guy. He's been doing all kinds of cool stuff for a long time. He loves the camera, so he's probably not gonna turn around. If he does, he's gonna have that look on his face. <laughs> but he's obviously a master on the coach side, on the fabrication and all that. It's been a, a lot of Brian's input. He worked in this industry his whole life. All this stainless work, he's gotta be just one of a handful of people in the entire country that can do this broke stainless, the pleating on the back and all that. So that's all we actually did on this truck was that and then we're putting the interior in it because nobody else could do that. And it was like, well, could you guys think you could do that from a picture? And I'm like, oh, well, I think it'd be kind of cool. Like, Brian, do you think we could do that? And it's like, Bruh. I think so. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> and it freaking looks trick. So we've got a video on our YouTube stuff and our social media okay. stuff that'll kind of be for during and after coming out yeah, on well, that. Is is there any projects that you won't do? I mean, we've seen everything from, there's a Sprinter van, a 1969 Peterbilt, the Super Seas, the horse trailers. Is there anything that you won't touch? Uh, there probably is. I mean, you know, we, we do say no to some stuff, but I say it all the time, like we're not a company of no, and I don't want to become a company of no. Like that's how we are always pushing our, you know, our limits and our level and all that stuff and growing as a company, you know. Uh, first, sure, the first few things that you do, sometimes you get in, you're like, like, geez, what have we done, you know? And it can kind of eat your lunch, but then you grow and you, you gain ability and all that kind of stuff. And then it's good diversity. So I think it's good business, you know? We have the horse trailer stuff that, you know, we're one of the top tier builders in that. We've, you know, now have the coaches, we have the sprinter van, we've got the, you know, the fracking rigs, all that kind of stuff. And it's just good diversity. I don't want to be just doing one thing. Plus it's, I like to build cool stuff, you know? Hey, I, <laughs> well, I, I think that's that what you do cool. with customs too. Yeah. Doing the custom stuff. Correct. I think I'm seeing, is that yeah. a chassis back That's there? a chassis That's... that we just moved from, basically moved into interiors. We can go take a look at that. The horse trailer stuff basically starts down there. This one is actually beginning the turn to come back around and we complete that down on the other end of the line. We originally, this was all horse trailer stuff. It will go back to horse trailer stuff once we have the addition on going that way. Um, but right now it is coach and specialty yeah, works. So kind of reminds me of a Newell coach. Mm -hmm. the same way the Newell coach skin line looks yep the big sheets of aluminum the valid slide rooms yeah are you able to show us how those will push in and out yeah yeah so that's one of the things about mm -hmm. the valid slide rooms is they're yep. on these tracks For some reason something does go wrong with it there's a way that you could yeah disengage it and manually was a big deal for me in and one of the things I was excited about going with the valid slide is the manual override. Again, stuff can happen, stuff will happen. So having a good manual override and the fact that you can push that in, reinflate the air seal, go on down the road, everything's fine. Shoot, you could use it that way. You just got to push it back out, you know. It doesn't ruin your trip until we can get you service. When these are in, we get them settled in and adjusted. We haven't had an issue with them. They're a great slide system. And that linear guide bearing, you know, where even when they're loaded, you know, on the big 21 foot, you know, slides yeah. that we're doing, like this one has a big 21 foot super C slide or uh, super slide on the other side. You can still push it in. It might take me two hands, but yeah. <laughs> I can push it in. But yeah, it's all day no aluminum skin on everything. We kind of do what we call semi seamless. So the only seams are above and below the slide outs. And then like if there's a big wall space like this, we usually have to put one seam. So trying to minimize, that's mostly a cosmetic deal, you know, seams. It looks better without seams, I think. So, but then when we flush the windows in, which we've yet to cut the windows all in and all that, like the whole thing is nice and clean. But um, you can see kind of a little bit more without the doors on it and all that. Like our bays, you know, are just yeah. Like it's all double walled. That's inch and a half thick all the way around. It's not you know glorified HVAC ducting or something like that. It's fully insulated, all that. So this one, this truck has fuel tank here, 200 gallons of fuel 
cool on this particular truck. This is an X15 Cummins on it, mated to an Allison. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about transmission setups and all that. Um, we have sprayed the sound deadener in the floor um, on this one, and then all the black coating is a ceramic thermal insulation um, that's sprayed on. Then we wire it, then we close cell foam the whole coach. So it's some, it's got great insulation in it. But that ceramic coating is, it's a very expensive coating, but it, we tested it out and it makes a huge difference in, tra in heat load. So it's the same stuff that's on the bottom of the space shuttle. Um, the black on the bottom of the space shuttle is the same. That's what it was developed for. Okay, now on the ceiling of this, I know it's a one piece sheet of aluminum them, but yep. what is all this structure that we're seeing both in the in the roof of it and then also kind of below the floor here yeah so our i beams and i think we actually have a floor system over there i can show you but they're sitting on a five inch tube a five inch riser tube and that creates this trough where all of our mechanicals run in that trough so water lines and a lot of wiring and all that there's an access panel up here there's an access panel back there there's about five access panels so if we need to get to, into that trough for whatever reason we can do so from the underside we can get into it from any of the bays but this i-beam going across here comes out to a tube out here and then all the walls are built off of that actually you can see a little bit of that tube um, right here so that is welded into those i-beams that's our proprietary extrusion nobody else um, has that we had that made 3 16 wall it's just a really really stout tube and we use that above and below the slide outs it's the top rail the bottom rail it's it's used a lot yeah and, um, then, the, and then the slide rooms i know there's a lot of structure in the valid slides we've got one right here behind yep. me but all kind of giving it that full structure yeah, yeah for sure and again everything's welded out like it's not screwed together or nothing like that or stapled heaven forbid you know and all that so this is basically a spacer that goes on that sheeting and then when we spray foam it it a gives us room to route our wire a big deal that we use this is our 120 volt wiring it's marine cable it's literally it's labeled boat cable on here it's okay. what they use in marines it's a really uh, high stranded wire tough you know it's vibration resistant all that stuff it's extremely expensive about 10 times the cost of regular Romex. So other RV Super C manufacturers, are, are, do you know if they're using I, Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, the stuff we've serviced is all, you know, Romex. You know, like Romex, you know, the yellow cable, the white cable, or the orange cable, or whatever. It's a, it's a solid wire, which is really bad for vibration. You know, you clamp it down, and then it vibrates, and it can break. Um, yeah. So going and upgrading to that on all the motorized stuff is a big deal, I think. Um, and you, you, you pay dearly, but it's just a better connection so should last a long time but that spacer leaves room for the wire and you can see yeah you know we didn't set like this is we didn't do anything different today than we do any other day but everything's secured in and then it it's more foam that way we can get close to three inches of foam in this wall when we do the spray foam in there so and it doesn't really do it justice but this is the flange that we actually end up mounting our window to so the sheet is glued on the outside this is a half inch thick that we machine down so it ends up being one piece we're not layering stuff that might be an issue but this is what allows us we're not putting wood in there this is what allows us to frame that or recess that window in that so, fully flush yeah, look from yeah the i'm not sure what everybody else does um but that's what we came up with and it's again a machine down half inch plate aluminum that just goes in there and the window recesses into that and it's should be bulletproof on leak and all that and that was the design intent behind it but this will be a the frame out and the start to a uh, an entertainment center oh, on nice. this slide out so the mechanism and all that stuff is down here on the valve that's part of the drive mechanism that's what's behind the access hatch on the outside of them and then of course we tape and, and glue on both VHB tape and glue the skin onto it um, and then it's all seam sealed and everything like that on the slide fabrication this is pretty cool to see it shows off what we're really doing because when it gets to the paint it just looks all nice and smooth but that's all a fully welded out seams all those that mitered corner the bottom corner cap I won't tell you how many times we had to try and figure out how to get that cap right but all aluminum all metal structure up there yep. i don't know anybody else in the super c industry that's doing it that way right we've been asked and it's not that i'm like anti doing something fiberglass but you know yes a little while ago is there something i won't do 
I'm just not there yet in my life. I've worked on too many that have come in with leak issues and all that that just wreck a whole coach and just completely devalue it. About everyone I've ever seen has leaked that's a few years old. That, I'm not sure that that ever goes anywhere and, and is all welded. So I get, you know, the aerodynamic, the nose cap has a certain look. The fiberglass rear cap has a good look. You know, I like how they look. I just don't like the end result, you know, five, six years down the road. Um, yeah. And there might be room for development there, um, you know, where we could grow, you know, in our expertise and knowledge on that. But we're aluminum guys. That's what, you know, what we do and all that. This is a 567 Peterbilt. So it's all chrome down, everything like that. We're putting a different custom bumper on it and all that, and then blacking stuff out. So it'll look cooler and cooler and cooler the more we black out, which seems to be a theme around here. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And you know, we talked about it a little bit in another video, but we've got a Peterbilt here. We just looked at a Freightliner. You're mm -hmm. willing to convert different chassis. Well, there's a Volvo right there. Yeah, Volvo. <laughs> well, and then also, so. too, I saw an older Super C that you were doing a full remodel yeah. on. What will you yeah. service? What will you work on? What? Some of that is driven by timing, you know, to be honest, the, the extra stuff like the service work and the remodel. And that was one of those, you know, peeling back an onion thing. Like it came in just with a little bit of water damage and then it was just, it was really wrecked. And the customer who's a really good customer of ours opt opted to go ahead and just have us just gut it fully out and put it back together. So it didn't come in with that intention, but it's what we do. It's, you know, it all fits in. Obviously there's a charge associated with doing it again good diversity we don't we don't say no to much the remodel stuff kind of is more on the specialty side so there's the horse trailer side there's a specialty side and then there's the coach side so those separate entities so there's a 12 year old or eight year old truck outside that's waiting to come in that we're doing new floors new countertops i think we're reconfiguring the bathroom and a few things on so we're about taking it just does it fit into the schedule and when and you know does it work with the customer schedule there's a couple stations that really really show the structure of this but this coach where it's at in, in this part of the process mm -hmm. is there more stuff that you could show us kind of the guts of this coach that's going to separate you from other super c builders because it's it's got the black uh the ceramic on it it's kind of hard to see you know some of the real structure stuff like this whole bottom rail you know how hard that is these things can drag they hit things they you know all that stuff going down the road that coach on the way to barrett jackson i rolled off on those beautiful arizona roads that they have and rolled off on a broken piece of asphalt and got stuck in the gravel and was able to get it back up on the road but in the process it hit a freaking little uh i don't even know what it was a rock or something like that it lifted the paint off of that corner i mean it hit it right there there was no body work other than paint work that we needed to do and those are the things uh i don't have the doors on here but our doors are a huge deal for us super solid yeah yes, and sir. that's been like the number one complaint that customers have said and all that is is the door so the bay doors uh, all that stuff that goes into it uh sound deadening you know this is the generator bay so we sound deaden the generator bay and not only is it insulated it's got sound deadening on top then we hush matted on the inside that's the same way on our, on our wheel wells also because that's where a ton of the road noise comes up is from the wheel well area so sound deadening extra sound deadening on top the hush mat all that stuff on the inside makes a really quiet yeah. this is the valid super c slide we have a 21 foot slide over yep. here bigger slide room than any well i guess there's full wall slides in some motor homes but for sure but this level of structure from what valid has told us this is, this is the biggest valid slide wow. that they've ever built is this one we've done this a couple times now yeah and this i see the slide bearing mm -hmm. so in the newell coaches when they get to be over 17 six or something yeah they add a third slide bearing yep. in the middle but this actually has you can see this metal structure within the slide room what's all going on yeah slide? so this is on this one this is bunk beds here and then it's a dinette and a sofa here um so to add strength and tie it into the roof of the slide we added this wall this is not something that valid asked us to do or anything we just think it's necessary so we added this wall extended this all out this is all where the bunk bed they're big kids you know yeah big bunks and all that so the bunk beds in here and when it's all said and done it all just looks like finished wood 
wood, you know, bunk bed. This is all buried in our wall, but it just ties everything together. It, you know, keeps that floor nice and stout and, and all that, and the roof in particular, because it's just free span, you know, roof that coming across there. So there's a, that is a nice thing. And I know probably seen it at Newell and all that, that roof does have a crown to it. Mm -hmm. So it's crowned this way to get the flow out. And we want to keep that crown in it. And the bigger it gets, the more that crown wants to go away. So doing some stuff like this keeps it jammed in there. Very robust. It's cool to see all this stuff without all the fit and finish. Work. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I say all the time, like this is what separates us. A lot of people can do pretty interiors, and I like there are some really good looking interiors out there. But this is truly what separates us. You know, this half inch you can kind of see over there. There's half inch and then quarter inch. So there's three quarters of an inch of aluminum that is this plate right here that the drive mechanism mechanism is bolted to this is what carries your entire slide and that's the that's yeah. the mechanism looks like a, a high-end watch or something yeah. those gears are <laughs> exactly it's uh, kind of cool yeah the grade eight bolts all the way throughout our bulkhead wall and tie-in all of that tie-in just to tie into the truck you know the, the two five inches all that stuff and that wall basically you know it, it becomes interior so it goes away but those sections of wall go all the way up to the top here and just tie that whole thing so that cab over, you know, really what it wants to do is kind of try and fall off the front and that ties it all together and keeps it rigid and stout forever and ever. But a lot of stuff like that. Again, there's talking to that access hatch. There's an access hatch right there um, that's accessible from the bottom down in there, in that bay there. I hate mice. We've done everything we can to keep a mouse. There's no mechanical bay or space or anything like that that varmint can get up in there because they are so freaking destroyed. Sealed off. Know. Yes, sir. Man, a lot of the stuff that we've seen that yeah, mice <laughs> on a remodel. Is, yeah, it's a bad it's deal. Bad. So sealing it off, not with plastic or something like that, but with aluminum. Super sealed. Um, this uh, trough, you can't really see what it's doing. It's literally basically a scoop. So those are hydronic boiler lines coming from the engine loop of the truck that we've wrapped up just for the coating and all that stuff. And they go kind of into a trough and that trough kind of arches it so that it can't kink. It's not going over a hard edge. It just kind of radiuses it down so that way it doesn't eventually want to try and kink or chafe or something like that. But doing that, this the electrical one here, we do the same thing with the electrical coming into the base. We can see on that show coach that we did the walkthrough of the exterior one, there's, there's a ton of electrical and systems that end up down there and we want to protect them and doing some stuff like that. I don't know that I've not seen that done anywhere else also, but again, we started out doing service for this stuff. It was like, oh yeah, and then remodels and then whatever. And that's kind of drove our whole thought process is stuff's going to fail. How can we make it serviceable? How can we prevent that or minimize that? And so throughout the whole thing, there's that is the common theme on it all. Yeah, um, that, best way to learn. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that you don't see is what really is important. Correct. So, and talking to the value, like what are we paying for? Why yeah. is it the cost? Well, right here, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Like well, that's the difference. Now also too, if you guys haven't seen the other video we did, the full tour, not only is it the stuff that you can't see, but when we get into the finished product, the stuff like the ladder or the front cap that folds up where you can have it open or have a folding down bed, just so much trick stuff. The way the bays are finished mm -hmm. out, just an awesome machine. Thank but you. Thank you. Want to show us more what else yeah. is going on you want to show us more um more? i can show you a little bit of the prep for the mechanicals or the wet bay yeah. um that's the aqua hot bay a water manifold and all that ends up there but this is kind of like the waste tank base here's another one of the chutes that we direct water line into and our holding tanks slide in into this racking system one black one gray and slides in this way and then all the connections you can see them right here on this all the connections are dropping down right into that tank so all the connections into the tank they're right here if there was ever an issue if the tank needed to come out we can disconnect it we can pull it all out again serviceability you can't say it enough and then this will just be this will end up being where all the the cord reels and all that stuff are usually back in this back bay yeah there's a rear window um, in the bathroom so we have to have some means of egress to meet code approval yeah. and all that a secondary means of egress from any bath or bedroom. So we can either put it in the bedroom, in the slide, which is generally a bigger window. We can put it in the slide opposite, you know, at the foot of the bed, which kills storage, or 
we can put it into the bathroom. We've even we've done uh, that's the very first one we did had a rear entry door, um, and they kind of use that to go in and out even to their trailer and stuff like that. Oh, so, nice. depending on the floor plan, this is a big bathroom. Um, so you can do a dual entry. You can do multiple entries. Mm -hmm. You can do an egress. Oh yeah. Nice. Yep. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. This one you can't really tell it on this, but the bathroom for this one starts up here. Huge. Which is bathroom. pretty cool. But the slide out extends into the bathroom. Oh, nice. And so the washer dryer, I think, is what's prepped for this one. The washer dryer ends up in this section of the slide out, if that makes sense. And then it's a kitchen sink, the toilet, and the shower's over there. So it's a huge shower. It's a huge bathroom. And when it slides out, you know, like it's a great spot to put a washer awesome dryer. Stack. So, yeah, this one's nice. Uh, this is really close. If people look up the show coach that we did, it was at Barrett Jackson and PRI and stuff like that last year. This is a really close floor plan to that one. And it was what I kind of designed. Like, if I was just going to buy a coach, what would I need? I got three kids, you know, all that. Like, so it was, you know, all that stuff was uh, into it. So it's a good two full bath, bunk beds, washer dryer. That's really hard to do in a, you a super c4 plan sitting in here they kind of moved it out of the way to to uh, clean up but this is our fender skirt if you will that goes in here we screw it in here and then it's pinned in here so it's removable so if you ha ever have a blowout and it were to damage the side or something like that it's quarter inch plated all the way around the whole inside like we're not you're not damaging the inside of that but that can get damaged get a tire flung on it or just to get it out of the way to change a tire so it's fastened in here and pin there into the side. We put bed liner on the inside and sound deadener just to kind of minimize. And it, it looks good aesthetically when you look in there. It's got black in it, but they just set it in there to kind of get it out of the way to sweep up. We talked about this in the exterior walkthrough, but this is our hitch. This is what we designed. I wish I had one sitting here in the raw because it would just blow your mind on it. It's two layers of 3H steel that come down. First one comes all the way up. Pass our five inch riser tube that's in there that all the I-beams are sitting on and it's bolted in. And then there's a second layer and that's the one that comes all the way down under here. It's all gusseted. These gussets go all the way to the front of the hitch. There's a roller under there. It's basically the tail dragger rear end so they can drag. There's quite a bit sitting out so that's where the spot that we've designed for it to hit. What that whole cavity when we, this hitch, the top layer of it goes up four feet so we plate the bottom of our frame and it it just it locks that whole frame together where it can't kind of move around the truck frame and then our five inch tube is bolted into that as well so it really locks everything together i'm not sure if i can yeah pop this but it allows us to do this is our nobody we, else is we call it this. we call it the coffin but you know well, you could put golf clubs you could put you know long i, I don't know about surfboards depending on yeah. but you know longer items golf clubs your you know flagpoles any of that um, stuff uh, sporting stuff that we're not allowed to talk about on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Exactly. So. I think this would make a heck of a bar, <laughs> like an outdoor bar with bar stools and. Oh heck yeah! Know, wow, we've got an, this idea. an idea. I've we'll already. Spec a coach. Uh, that's you're giving them. That some may ideas. or may not end up on the show, coach, yeah. at some point. But, oh man, that's uh, cool. These guys are thinking of all kinds yeah. of cool stuff. Now this Sprinter van here, a little bit different. I, was this the same one we saw at the Bear Jackson? This is the same one. It's a 2023. It is for sale. We're acting. We're asking 157 for that van the van product uh, there's not one in here right now there's several coming up on the schedule but the van product actually runs down the horse trailer the main line as well so this product is built is this um, a four on by that four? lane yeah four by four 2023 diesel um wow 2023 four-wheel yep. drive sprinter for 157 mm -hmm. did you say yep and it's got aqua hot so it's got built-in hot water it's got an outside shower it's got a porta potty in here we kind of set this up like the thing like the weekend bug out i want to go into the mountains or whatever for a, a weekend and come home and not have to worry about it little and, van life yeah, yeah it doesn't have built-in tanks it's a cool style I, i'm a yeah. big fan of the sprinter vans myself i love these usb ports outlets you got the puck lighting yep. little vent with a fan there to get some fresh air yep and it's got an ac on it this Good. does have lithium batteries so lithium batteries so what's the lithium battery system on this this has two three 300 amp hour lithium batteries on it and a 3000 watt inverter. Um, That's huge for a sprinter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are pretty cool. I like like, you know, with the shades up, 
you know, and you can kind of see out like, man, what a cool thing to just take up into the mountains, get lost down a freaking, you know, logging road and oh, just yeah. disappear for a day or two would be awesome. Well, this is and the way to do it in style. The short wheelbase sprinter vans go into a normal parking space, you know, and so there's there's nice things about that. It's just a no hassle, jump in it and then come home and well, like take this. it back out the next time. So I, I've had a few sprinter vans myself. Have you? I really like this floor plan with the table area back here. And then, you know, when it's time to go to bed, you fold it down into a table. But yeah. then when it's like, all right, it's time to get the day going up, put the, you know, and put it pops the bed up. up and and yeah, it's a hydraulic base on it. So it just comes right up. And uh, the outdoor shower, which is back here, you know, for it that comes out here, there's the shower curtain set up, the wands here, the curtain tabs into here. So it's got the whole surround, the bamboo floor on it. I mean, again, you know, you, you there's no way to get ton. You're not getting 150 gallons of waste tank in something like this. Yeah. So make it. Yeah, my thinking is to make it simple so it's just easy and something you want to use you know jump in it and how, go how big is a freshwater tank it has a 30 gallon freshwater tank okay yep. yeah you can get a couple showers uh, mm -hmm. and then with the aqua hot you can take hot showers correct yep yep nice. so it's aqua hot for hot water and for heat and then uh, this van actually came in and it had uh, a hydronic looped through the engine so we kept that in it and incorporated in so when you're going down the road there's auxiliary heat back here as well nice. without having to have your aqua hot on 2023 four by four sprinter now does this have the same three-year warranty that all our product that we build here has three-year full coverage warranty i don't think there's many sprinter converters doing that kind of a warranty so long no ago. and we're actually working right now uh with, with a couple other independent kind of you know craft builders like we are to develop a nationwide service center us being one of them here in oklahoma city and then oregon and colorado and all those because a lot of the you know rv service centers are also sprinter dealers so they get you know they don't necessarily want to service our stuff which is a problem so we've got our horse trailer network that can do it we've got a lot of other uh, companies earth Homer in Colorado will do it for us, all that stuff. I mean, they're- No, like, is that with the coaches as well, with the super seasons? Both, well? yeah, both with the coaches, it's more, we're gonna be more, I'm either gonna fly somebody or we're gonna come get it or something like that, or we're gonna, we've got, we've established a really large network of really great service centers. And mostly we want the mobile service guy that can come to you. Cause that's usually the guy, like he owns the business. It's, you know, not just the tech and he's experienced and all that kind of stuff so just over the years we've developed a really good nationwide service center so for all our product it'll be that we were talking to a company in scottsdale area also about being kind of that sort of southwest service center for the coaches as we get going as we get more on the road we'll need more of it right now it's not a super big deal you know well, to have I, that I but like we've been seeing it you build stuff so that it's not going to need as much service if you build it better the first time it's not going to need as much for sure so, for sure so 157 grand someone yeah. can become the next owner of this but um you got some other cool stuff uh, around here you think you can show us more around yeah it looks like we got a little uh, mobile command center here yeah so let's say uh, fracking rig this is a really good customer of ours that we've done a bunch of projects for so the whole thing's got different three different zones in it it's, uh, it's got like 27 tvs or monitors in the back and it's a pretty high-tech deal when it's out using in the field this stuff takes a lot of abuse and we do kind of a different build in this whole deal than it's less pretty, more commercial, you know, the metal cabinets and all that kind of stuff, solid surface countertops, rubber floor and all that stuff. It's made to be abused. But again, the diversity of what we do and, and I like doing this stuff. We There's a trailer that's actually sitting out there right now. We're waiting for the mast to come in. It's a 70 foot tall mast. It's for the uh, Air Force, the Air Force Reserve. It's a drone piloting uh, trailer. That's the first of 50 that we're going to do. So we're wow. a military, uh, we're, we're a government contractor. We have our government, we can bid on projects and all that stuff. And as that stuff, first of all, it's an honor, right? To, for me to be able to do that stuff and us to be able to do that, like we take it as a high honor, take even more special care. I mean, that's like our men and women out there putting their lives on the line. It came from, you know, years ago saying, yes, we could do that to a guy that rolled in here and had this junky cargo trailer that needed a, you know, incognito deal, their special ops deal guys and it just turned into this whole thing and we've got a lot we've done do all, for Oklahoma City Police Department we do all their SWAT vans and stuff like that it's just kind of a broad range of stuff when you do the upholstery you do the cabinet you have the fab side you have all those things like you can put that towards a lot of stuff and I, I like the commercial stuff like that type of product 
as well. It's kind of a whole different, it's, it's almost like two personalities, you know, where it's a different thought, it's less pretty and more, you know, rugged type deal, so. Yeah. Well, it's always an honor to work for those that serve the country, yeah, and I can sure. tell there's a very patriotic vibe here. The name 1492 <laughs> Coach Works, yeah. uh, you can really sense that American yeah. pride in this building. Yeah, for sure. A lot to be said about yeah. that. But yeah, so if someone could think of it, and it's possible, I think you guys you guys get her done, but I want to show everyone that structure, how everything yeah. is coming together back Let's here. Let's go look and see what they got done today here. And I think you've got a Volvo back here too. So we've seen a Freightliner, a Volvo, and a P. Yep. A little bit of everything. Yep, and then you know the ones that I'm kind of geeked up because I've yet to build one. There's some 389, you know, the old school P, like that look, like those are, the next one in is a 389. Like that's gonna be, it's gonna be a whole different, you know, talk about different personalities. Oh. Like that's a whole different thing, you know, and it's, I'm looking forward to building those. I think some of those Peterbilt guys will like, be able to appreciate yeah, that. For sure, yeah, for sure, for sure. The customer supplied this particular chassis. There's some really unique things on the chassis. He went with the tag axle in the back, which I'm not sure how many people would have built that, but that back axle lifts. Really? Um, liftable tag so it turns super yeah and so it turns you, you know you have towing capacity because he wanted the super singles on it because usually when you have the the tag axle you're going to have the dual drive axle mm -hmm. yeah so he went with the super singles which I, I i i mean i'm fine with doing it i don't i'm not familiar with it so i almost have nothing to say he thinks it's going to be really cool and it might be like the trickiest thing you know ever um it was just it was different to me and i'm like well you know again it's Ford Chevy Dodge I don't you know we don't build that truck and as long as it's you know in 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 our wheelhouse and all that but having that lift axle because he's going to this is an RV that's it's the most it's ever going to tow is a you know a Tahoe or something yeah. like that and so he wanted that improved turning radius um, and he had a Volvo previously built by somebody else that he was really pleased with and that's good and, and uh, Evan and Chris are just been wonderful people and been kind of along for our whole ride this truck was a year and a half delayed getting to us wow no. and so they're been very patiently and excited so they've been again they've been they were our sec our third order we ever got was actually this truck so wow. they've been kind of along and they've been out here a few times and yeah they're really cool people i'm um, excited to see what you're going to come up with but i gotta ask so this is it's kind of a cab chassis here mm -hmm. as we look up here yep totally fin i mean this is just a straight cab will this get cut out yeah and then mm -hmm. will you do like the bed over like mm -hmm. you did yeah this is the giant cab over with the king we were talking right? about yeah where it's it's kicked way out so um and it's a little bit taller than normal per their spec because he wants to be able to sit in there so you know it's it, this one will kind of have a whole different geometry because instead of dropping it straight down we're going to kind of taper it further back and it's again everything basically is a prototype um for us here we're it's all designed on the fly that's kind of what we can do we don't say no to a whole heck of a lot this is pretty cool that they they have this they're getting these prepped this bracket here will end up being bolted onto that frame and then this is what we really there's a, a rubber isolator vibration dampener that we put onto this and then this is bolted into place here and then our frame sits on here and we weld all the way around and then we weld inside here as well and that's i mean you can see they're getting ready to put a whole bunch of them on what um, is that what type of aluminum, aluminum this is, yep yeah. this is half inch aluminum so as big and as bad and as stout as it is i mean feel how light that is wow like so we can make it rugged and robust without just going crazy on the weight of everything so that's the nice advantage plus it's not going to rust you know all that yep. stuff that goes along with it now what's the timeline we're seeing this kind of in a raw chassis yeah. to get to the finished product like we saw today what's the timeline right around three months is what wow. we're working towards right now so um there's a lot you know that goes into it and we want to be able to get that down we need some more stations and all that stuff but three months is still it's probably going to be fairly close to a three-month build per coach because it just has to go through you know the paint and you know all of that stuff that just takes a long you know time you got to let it wet you know all that stuff so three months will probably be even you know three years from now it's probably still about three month build time so 
So okay. as we gain uh, capacity, it won't shorten the length. But yeah, now um, over here, this is really interesting. We saw this this morning. So this is the the floor system. So if you can envision, you know, this sits the bottom side of this sits right on that truck frame. So basically this will go and it'll sit right up there. There's quite a bit of work. We still got to frame it all out. It's got to be fully welded. There's a lot of science that goes into welding this thing out. Obviously they're squaring it right now. So it's got to be bang on straight. We want it perfectly level and then they'll weld it. And I, I get a kick out of it because it's pretty cool to watch our welders come down in unison, talking to each other, hood down. They're yelling out at each other, start, stop, all that stuff. And they're welding basically the exact same thing on the other side to keep it straight because if you don't this thing will literally just if you put heat in the wrong area it'll just turn and twist like you you'd have to have it chained to the floor to keep it from happening it's so so they have to be working in sync correct. perfect sync yep. heating them up both yep. sides yeah the machine's got to be set they got to be welding at the same rate just to get it to keep it perfect and and then we don't have to fight it so it all goes on and it sits all like how it's supposed to and all that the other thing to show on this this is the I-beams that are stacked up. Um, we build this in-house. Um, that's our roof structure. Ties into the outer wall. Ties into the top of the top rail here. It's super lightweight, super strong. Um, has the you know all the cavity for the mechanicals, and then that's the roof coil that goes on top of it. So our fab shop, our little fab shop that's about to grow and quadruple in size. The last things here that the fab shop does, they do do interior stuff. Is it's it's upside down but this is actually our bed frame um, that we weld and then this is our shower pan on the coaches we this is marine grade aluminum it's fully welded out it's one piece there's no way it can leak and we tile directly onto that so again it's sort of uh, kind of an exclusive thing we do actually that's the bottom no that's the top side of it but puts the 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 slope in there and the whole nine yards on it basically to prevent any kind of leaks so the, the fab guys do do interior components as well that come out with the truck so this is part of our QC process so this morning when we the guys would have gotten here this trailer was basically all put together this is the final stage and our inspector it's inspected at every point along the way but this is the final run and the final look so as you can see it's almost literally no sto stone unturned no I mean I don't mind showing this at all we QC right here. everything chip tile chip, yeah. I mean that's very minor minor yeah. stuff yeah. you guys so we'll finding. come yeah and that's part of it I mean that's the thing with the horse trailer side it's really high quality you know every little thing and then of course it's systems checked and all that kind of stuff so all those details everything's there's order review then our process is we put all of this together back together it's done it looks like it's ready to ship out and then Lisa or myself or somebody else will then come through and do kind of just an audit like you know the for forest for the trees thing where you sometimes just look at it and you miss it but coming back through and just visually looking at everything Thing and checking it over again, opening up all the cabinets, make sure nothing was missed, make sure it matches the order. It's really good when Lisa, because she's usually the one that's direct with the customers. So um, when she comes in, she kind of knows exactly what the customer was looking for. So. And is this the same process that you use for the the coaches as well? Yeah. Oh yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all the like again all through the stages you know there's eight trailers in process here right now they don't move forward until they're qc and cleared and a lot of that qc stuff at that those stations is just to make sure that we have everything you know we've got the wires where they need to be for the future you know thing that's happening and all that stuff or the plumbing and all that but then of course the quality you know audits all the way through the connections are good you know all that stuff everything's secure like it needs to be so it's a really intense process we take pictures that's one of the things we started a couple years ago we switched everything Everybody over to basically they're working off of iPads or surfaces all our inspectors and their job is to take pictures all along the way so we have a data saved in this trailer file that we can go back if there was ever an issue or a customer wanted to add something we can say look right here is this framing and this that and the other thing so it's a really intense process but it results in what I feel is one of the best trailers on the road and then after it goes through all that here's the finished product now we did a full video on this coach 
an in-depth tour. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now, if someone wants to custom order a coach or purchase that Sprinter van uh, here at 1492 Coach Works, who can they get a hold of? Uh, they can call in here and ask for Weston, Lisa, or myself, 405-745-6666 um, or info at 1492coachworks or outbackcustoms.com will get a hold of us anyway. Awesome, Aaron. Well, I greatly appreciate yeah. you and the team Thank at you. 1492. Yep. Greatly appreciate all yep. of you subscribing to the channel. Hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. And make sure to subscribe to 1492's channel as well. I'll leave that in the description below.